story about what I'm doing in Nepal and what I think about Nepal and what Nepal could be for you as you wish it to be for you. Anyway, so Can welcome to Nepal. Very speaking speaking no? No? Yes. It's very formal. It's kind of, anyway, the, well, um, this is just to welcome you all to Nepal and next, I will do this for the next one. Uh, this, this is a very short talk. It'll be a little bit about me, a uh, personal introduction, what I'm doing here. About, a little bit about Nepal, about what, and a bit about how. It's about how, if you would like to visit there, it's very easy to be there, and I'd like to show you that it's not so complicated and it's a fantastic place to be. Next. So generally, I'm just an architect uh, here, but next. Um, when I first came to Nepal, I had no intention of going to Nepal. I, was after, I got really tired of my studies in England. I spent in England 20 years. I was tired of my study. I had to get out. And I went with some friends to do one research in Nepal, in Gujarat, and another research group with people from the Smithsonian Institution in uh, New York, in uh, the south, in Vijayanagara. And I thought I was going to see another country in context. And I went down to Sri Lanka. And everybody said to me on the way, oh, you don't need a, prob a visa, it's no problem, no problem. It was a problem, and a single visa to India, and I, when I went to the boat, they refused me an entry in, um, in Sri Lanka, because at the time you had to have a visa prepared to go to Nepal, and I didn't know. So I, I didn't know what to do. I was thinking that I'd be stuck for the rest of my life on the boat between India and, Nepal, and uh, Sri Lanka. But I got a three-day visa and I just said, okay, if, not, it's, if it's not in the south, I'll go to the north. And I had no idea where I was heading to. And then, um, when, and next one. And when I got to Nepal, I was kind of, after five months in India of, of, of traveling on, on trains, I was, you know, everybody asking you, what is your name? What is your husband's name? How old are you? How many children do you have? What is your occupation? What is your husband's occupation? And all these sorts of things. And they want your rupees, of course. And then I came to Nepal, and the person at the border police took my passport, and he looked at me, and he smiled with his big, bright eyes. And I thought, what is he going to want from me now? How many rupees it's going to be? What is he going to ask me now? And it really took me some time to realize that he was just really nice. And the rest is history, uh, really. And I fell in love with this country, and I returned again and again and again. And it's really, for me, it was like magic. And then, uh, next one, and then at one, my first uh, trek, I was young at the time, I was sitting on the mountain on, near the temple, near this village, in this village, and I just, as an architect, I just could not figure out who lives where, where one house begins and the other one ends, <laughs> where is the entrance to, uh, to one house, and, and how do they know how to live there? And, and this was really, I couldn't figure it. I couldn't figure it out. I, uh, I couldn't figure out who lives where, where one house begins and the other one ends. I, it, it was just like, as an architect, I thought this is an impossible village. Next one, please. Next one. And so then I decided, okay, I'm going to do to go ahead and study. It was just too much, and also I felt really cheated. I learned in a very good school in in London. And I felt really cheated when I was in India and in Nepal because all these cultures, nobody told us existed. And I was really stunned both in India and in Nepal that it was such rich cultures and you just, you don't know about them. And I felt, I felt I was really angry and I thought, oh, I'm going to study this. So this is like a page of, from my uh, notebook and then next. And this is this village that you saw before. This is a section through, through one house, and this is the a drawing, of, of, um, uh, drawing of the village I did. And part of the result, it, it was called, the name of my thesis was Social, social Constructions, because it's really, and the ambiguity of the title is intended. Um, but um, you could see that the, the, this confusing thing, confusing village is very, the logic of it is environmental. It's social, it's about people working together, it's about geography, it's about environment, it's, it's all these things put together in the, that construct the village as they are, that is not visible to the, um, um, to the eye, but it's really there and it, it includes the stories, histories and stories and things like this. It's fantastic, it's a topic for another long, long lecture, but my PhD is, uh, is there uh, to demonstrate it. Can we go next? 
And uh, my work was mainly in the hidden valleys in the high Himalayas in the north. Next one. Uh, it's really, it seemed to me in the beginning a fantastic poem, completely different. Next one, please. But it's not really different in the end because mothers are mothers everywhere and people are people everywhere. And this is for me like a mother cleans the toys for <laughs> her little daughter to play with. This is for me really about motherhood. Can we next? To go next. But in, in general, Nepal, as you heard before, Nepal has three, um, uh, three ecological zones, the lowlands, the middle hills, and the high mountains, which you could see in this picture. And they are also because of the different uh, conditions. One is the low near India, the other one is, you know, immigrants came from Tibet, and the middle ones is kind of a mix from people who came everywhere. And uh, so there are really three ecological zones, but also three cultural zones. And you know, it changes from north to south, it changes from east to west, the country is very fragmented geographically, and these cultures have stayed there, and they're so rich, it's kind of endless. This is why I've been coming there for so many years. I think I, my first trip there was 1981 or 82, and I just can't stop going there again and again and again. Next one, please. So these are the Himalaya footwheelers, it's fantastic, flat lowlands next, uh, with beautiful sunsets, and next. And oh, oh, fantastic wildlife if somebody wants to really get into it. Birth, birthplace of Buddha, that is really wonderful. Next. And these are the middle hills, which are like really green, and they are very beautifully sculpted uh, uh, by terraces to make them into um, rice fields. This is one of my drawings of an old Gurung house. Next one. This is the Gurung village in the, in the middle hills again. It's, it's just beautifully uh, connected to the landscape. Next. Uh, th there's an urban culture of the Newaz in, the, uh, in mainly in Kathmandu Valley, but they're also in other places. It's really fantastic places for, of temples, of architectures. It has a history. Uh, it's really endless. Uh, next. And what, when people tell me, when my friends come to visit me in Nepal, they ask me well, what to do. So I'm telling them, just get lost. And I really mean it. Because you, if, if you, and I also, I refuse to learn about the Kathmandu Valley cities because it's better not to know and discover them every time again. You go, you enter through these little valleys, enter every, this is my recommendation to you. Enter, if you see a door open that leads onto something like this, go there. You don't know what you will find there. There's life there. It's real magic. Next, please. And what is nice about religion in, uh, in Nepal for me is that our God is El, El Kanovenokem. It's a really serious, very <laughs> angry God that you have to obey to. But the gods in Nepal are so nice. They play to facet. I don't know how. They play to facet with the kids at some times and they dance on the streets and they eat with you and it's just, and they dance with you and it's they tell you stories and it's really a culture that's not like um, you know the cultures in the West that developed in the uh, rich houses of the of the aristocracy. It's culture that has grown on the in the streets and it's still on in the streets, and it's lovely. It's everybody's culture. It's not this snobbish one uh, that's there. And religion there, it could be huge community uh, festivals and a very personal one. It depends on how you want to take it. Next, please. And also, it's very special because marriage there is still very sacred and you respect it. So these are kind of some from uh, wedding uh, ceremony, uh, ritual, clothes, and uh, decoration. Next. And the crafts there are still exist. There's still traditional crafts there. And because Nepal was isolated for so many years, all the crafts are still there. And you can see them, you can visit, you can talk to people. Um, it's really, and that's really, really rich if you take your time and you stop. And it's on the streets. You don't need museum. You, I mean, I think now you're beginning to need museums in Nepal. But until now, you didn't need to have museums in Nepal. It's all there. Just open your eyes and, and look. Go, and next one, please. And these are the same gods, but these are the heavy ones. The, really, this is kind of like, there's music on the streets. Uh, there's dancing on the streets. There's everything on the streets. Uh, go, 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 go. Next one. And for those of you who love shopping, there's just too much uh, to do there in terms of shopping. It's really busy bazaars, and it's really, truly lovely. And if you want the other end of things, you can also do this in the mountains. Uh, you can go to quiet places and do yoga and water meditation. Next one, please. 
Uh, Nepal has changed. Nepal is changing and it's changing for the better. It's really developing fast. Uh, this is Nepal, it, it, this is what is it, 30 years, 40 years difference between these two photographs of the same place next. But now there is everything in Nepal. It used to be like, I remember when my first, I first traveled to Nepal, we couldn't get eggs for my porters to eat. But now there's even chocolate cakes in the same place. So, but, so there's everything for everybody. It depends on where you are and what you want to, to, to take from it and how you want to, to be with it. And, and I kind of, when we were talking, we were saying, oh, but there, there are, the, you know, the cheap places is you know, all that you, you get the stories from your children. But they're also the very good places, extremely high quality places. So if this is, if you want a red carpet, you can even get a red carpet. This is the Yakin Yeti uh, in Kathmandu. Um, so if they're very, very comfortable next. There are some that are very designed in a very special, um, traditional Nepali wave or Newari way if you want to experience this sort of atmosphere next. Um, and they're very luxurious in a way, in a very particular Newari or Nepali or, or whatever way you wish. Next. Um, and this is in Bhaktapur, a very small, there's a, it's a hotel for four or six rooms now maybe in a traditional house you can go there it's not very expensive it's fantastic next uh, and the momo the famous momo there's only not only one momo there's a huge variety of momo these dumplings and um, and uh, you know and this is only the beginning for the variety of food you can get the next and you can get this good food everywhere. You don't have to go to the best restaurant, as you can see. Um, so it, it's really even trekking to be a five-star trekking. It's very accessible th today. You can really almost get everywhere you want. There's the cable car that uh, the ambassador likes very much, and you can really see. <laughs> you can see. It's you can see why uh, it's really wonderful. Next, this is not very far from Kathmandu Valley. Next one. And you can fly to the distant mountains without having to walk. And it's really a fantastic um, flight because when you travel between these high mountains, you travel like this. You look out the window, it's like looking out of the bus. These nets. And these are my pictures. When This is what you see from inside the airplane. And the locals also see, and this woman was so afraid, she was always from the moment of takeoff, she, she kind of prayed, you know, you know move the mala and kind of pray that you will know, land on right and there's also these ones if you want to go even further there are helicopter services sometimes and there are jeeps that can take you even further um, a further afield without having to walk uh, to these places there's also boats even if there's no sea there's some boats in, in uh, Pokhara next please this is Pokhara really a place outside Kathmandu that you can reach very comfortably beautiful lake beautiful view fantastic uh, next one this is to summarize a little bit. This is where I was planting rice when I was really young. <laughs> and, and, and this is uh, what my first drawing that I did in Kathmandu Valley. And I like it because it's a corner of a window in Kathmandu that it's not only rich in, in, in architecture and detail, but there's also room for the, you can't see it here, but there's also room for the wasps to live inside these uh, okay. special wood carving. And it, it's all, this is what's nice. The, 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 Papi, the Papi people are so welcoming. It's all okay. There's not a problem. Uh, you know, you don't, you just, you know, it's just welcoming and everything. Next, please. And over the years, I really made a lot of friends. And you can see my friends over history. And, uh, you know, this little girl is now a senior doctor, a senior uh, nurse in, a, in an eye hospital, but I know her from when she was four. So it makes it very special for me. Next, please. And, uh, you know, I really care for Nepal. This is um, in the, uh, uh, with the Israeli um, delegation after the emergency. I brought the engineers to look at buildings. I, ha I can help in the hospital. It was nice. Next. Um, and you're, you're really always, always welcome in Nepal. It's really fantastic. This is, this is when I go to my village in Faro, Faro, you know, everybody has to give you a mala, this flower mala, and the kids make it, and they, they do special work all day to collect the flowers and make them. So this is what I end up with, you know, with five kilos of flowers in my name. In the end of the welcome, but it's fun. Next, please. And it, there are many different ways of saying welcome, and I really like this picture because there's some Tibetan children studying in a gompa, 
and they all wear the same Tibetan clothes. But if you look closely, that's the expression of the personality, which I really, really love. It's kind of a, a nice uh, next one. So, uh, having said that, I would like to welcome you all the Nepal. I, my tradition is that good things you share with friends. Yeah. So please do come. Can I ask uh, you a question? Yes, yeah, sure. On your first trip, which I'm planning to do now because I've already good. got it in my head, yes. how much time do you need? As much as you can spare, and it's never enough. <laughs> no, but what's, what would you say, if you want to get the, 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 the most of it and you don't have like a month yeah, or if, so? I think within 10 days, excluding flights, you could stay a few days in Kathmandu, fly to Pokhara, fly to Jomosur, fly back and fly back, or take a car back, two and weeks. I think. Two weeks is good. Yeah, yes, okay. two weeks is good. Call me, I'll help you work out the itinerary. Great, that's my name. When is the next time? At the best time? At the best time, like you heard from spring and fall. Spring and fall because the winter, the winter, winter days are perfect. At 23 degrees, blue sky, no rain, but the nights get really cold. You get a really, because it's a, away from the sea, you get a huge temperature difference between day and night. In the village, in far west Nepal, where I we had temperature because we're doing some agricultural work, it was, during the day it was November, it was 34 degrees measured, 34 degrees at lunchtime, at night it was minus five. It was, and I can say because we measured it, it was amazing. So. So winter, it's not like this in Kathmandu. In Kathmandu, we would get to 23 and say 8 at night. But uh, it's not so extreme. Kathmandu is quite pleasant. So you can go also in the winter, but you don't see the mountains. I think um, I had a story, a friend of mine, like we don't like uh, rain. We don't like rain. We don't like wind. We don't like too hot. We're too cold. Once a close friend of mine, after many years that he's known me, one day he comes to me and he says, Ada, can I ask you something about your culture? And I, I was sure he's going to ask, he was going to ask me about how we make, make love or whatever. No? And then he says to me, why do you say good weather or bad weather? Weather is weather. <laughs> you know? And there was something to learn from. And you always learn from friends in yes. this sort of way. It, uh, about cultural differences, and yeah. it's a lesson to all of us. So, uh, so anybody wants to, I think people will be happy to know about the address. My address. Ah, and if you have time, you do. And if you like to make your own dresses, this is I'm Nepali dressed completely now. I made this. This is I bought in Nepal, and I told the tailors how to make it. And this is also made in Nepal to my design. This I bought in, in Nepal, and, um, and, and, and my mother, uh, she was very good in, in uh, sewing, and she said, Ada, this is really odd too. So they really do really good work, and you just have to know the places. I think my last discovery was a small, um, I think the room was about this big, and there were maybe about 15 people uh, working there. Uh, you know, everybody can hardly any space to throw, but they were always laughing, and they were always, you know, I couldn't see 15 Israeli in such a space with managing it at all. But these guys, they were all kind of so kind to one another, and they were stacks of clothes and materials, and everybody knew their places, and they're always smiling, very gentle and kind. It was Nepal, there's something to learn about this. Okay. And I, I have, I don't know if you're kind of not tired from things or not, but I have a short few minutes um, video about a friend of mine who's an Italian woman, mountain woman. It's very beautiful if you're interested to yeah. see. It's okay if you're tired and it's also okay. 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 Yeah. All right, well, do you want to share the video? It's, um, it's in Hebrew. It's my text in Hebrew. It's about a Tibetan woman in Kamadu. בין מספותי מלאיה, מעל נחל השמש, גרו הנימבה, אנשי השמש. הם היו גם חקלאים וגם סוחרים עשירים בין טיבט והודו. המהפכה האזרחית בנפאי של שנות התשעים הקיזה את דמו של העם ואותם הבריחה אל העיר קטמנדו. כמו גם אחרים, הם כאן עדיין קהילת כפר מאוחדת, מפוזרת בין בתים חדשים שבנו. בתוך הקו 
הפרוס האורבני הצפוף מסביב, בנות הכפר ובנותיהן שנולדו כבר בעיר, מתכנסות לקראת ראש השנה. השירים כבר הועברו באורצה, ויש הרבה חזרות. קרסנגרה, ימינה.